Welcome to New Possibilities. I speak truth to power without fear. So now you have another tragedy where innocent black woman is killed by the police. The sister, Atiana Jefferson, was killed by a Fort Worth police officer. And here's the background. The police received a call from Atiana Jefferson's neighbor. The neighbor was concerned because Atiana Jefferson's front door and side door were open. He was concerned that perhaps something may be wrong because she rarely leaves her front door open, especially at night. So the police arrive and instead of just simply going to the front door and ringing on the doorbell or knocking on the door and trying to talk to the, the occupant, you know, the owner of the home, these police proceed to lurk around the house with flashlights on the outside of the house and at one point they reach the bedroom and they're flashing their lights into the bedroom window. And uh, one of the officers sees Atiana Jefferson. And as soon as he sees her, like she's going towards the window to open the blinds to see what's going on out there. See, after seeing the light and hearing the noise and all that kind of stuff, this officer proceeds to tell her to put her hands up, to show him her hands and within a second after her commanding her to do so, this officer proceeds to shoot and kill this woman. Shoots through the window, killing Atiana Jefferson, 28-year-old woman. She was unarmed. She was not posing any kind of threat to this officer. She did not brandish a gun or anything like that. There was no gun near her, according to the news reports. But this officer proceeded to shoot and kill this woman. And obviously the people are outraged. They are demanding justice for this woman. And it's just a damn shame, man. It's a damn shame that we can't even be safe in our own homes, man. But this police officer killed this woman. He didn't, first of all, he didn't identify himself as a police officer. None of the police officers identified themselves. The officer didn't give her any time at all to comply with his instructions. And it's just crazy, man. We depend on the police to protect and serve. That's the slogan that the police department often use, like around the country. They often have protect and serve written on the sides of their cars. But instead of protecting and serving, they are abusing and harassing and killing black people too often. And this is why people don't trust the police. This is why black people are reluctant to cooperate with the police. This is why many of us are reluctant to even call the police, because when we call the police, somebody ends up dead. We have situations where people are brutalized and killed by these police. So that's why people don't trust the police. And yet and still, people wonder why black people don't trust the police. If we can't be safe in our own homes, we can't be safe anywhere from these police. And it's just a damn shame, man. And then even worse than that, instead of you know, trying to just focus on conducting an investigation and finding out exactly what happened here. You had a police department trying to defend the murderer, trying to defend the person that killed Atiana Jefferson. And basically, they, they are trying to go with the narrative that he felt threatened. You know, they use that statement within the, the press statement that they issued, and also what they did is they added a photo of a gun to the video footage of the killing of Atiana Jefferson. They added that photo in order to defend the police, to suggest that this officer had every reason to fear for his safety. They released a, video, uh, you know, a photograph with a gun without providing any context at all. They don't tell you where that gun was located. They don't say if that gun was anywhere near her. And according to the reports, she did not brandish a gun. She did not threaten the police with a gun or anything of that nature. And we don't even know if the police even the, knew at the time when they shot and killed her if a gun was even in her home. It seems like this is an after-the-fact action. They probably went through her house after killing this woman, took a photograph of this gun, probably in some completely different room, and tried to use that photograph to try to defend the police officer's actions. And this is why, you know, I don't buy into that bad apple 
narrative that the police often put forth, they always say there's a few bad apples. You know, it's not all police. You know, it's just a few bad apples that are responsible for uh, police brutality, suggesting that police brutality is some kind of anomaly. When in fact, it's a part of a systematic structure of racism within these police departments. You have a structure that defends police to kill our people, a structure that defends police to uh, harass our people. And here you have it again, where you have a police officer uh, being defended by the police department, where they're trying to suggest that somehow he had every reason to fear for his life. That's what they're doing. So anyway, man, tell me what y'all think about this story. Please rate, comment, subscribe. Peace.